Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast of Wake Up Church. We've been asleep for too long. This is your host, Dr. Rosalind Best. Today's podcast is being sponsored by bestlegacyfoundation.org. Please visit the website for opportunities for scholarships, mentorships, and a chance to leave a lasting legacy. Today's podcast is You Talk Too Damn Much. What? Let's get it. Satan gossips about you and me because he's jealous, he's envious, and he's waiting to see us fall as believers. Something as simple as office gossip or rumors seems so minuscule in the scheme of sin. But let me share with you the importance of keeping your damn mouth shut and off of people's business. Now, Gossip can be the truth that is derogatory, and it can be slander if it's a lie. We can't allow the life that we live to engage in such behavior, but I raise my right hand. I'm guilty. I have, and let's see what we need to do to keep our mouths shut and off of things that God does not want us to discuss. Understand the enemy of our soul. The devil can take a little piece of knowledge about us and he will use it to mess up your whole soul. Your emotions are out of, in, out of balance. He can whisper in your, in, your, in your inner soul all day long if we don't shut him down. We are in a warfare and God is trying to equip us with the word of God so that we are designed to live successful every day. Not just pockets of happiness, which is based on circumstances, but a perpetual joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Laughter is a good medicine. Knowing that Satan, if he could have his way, and I know you can testify, you and I would be like emotional toys that he plays with at any given time. Some of us are. He plays with us like toys. He lays traps to piss you off early in the morning, possibly while in traffic. You can be at work and overhear folks talking about you on the job. Disturb your lunch uh, because somebody is acting uh, like a bully. Or annoying you during your evening and harass you while you sleep, remembering all the shit that happened earlier that day. He's attacking the soul is his target area of messing up our lives, messing up our peace of mind and our emotional well-balance and self-respect. You see, the reputation that we exemplify comes from my actions. I can say I'm a Christian all day long, but I work with a wonderful lady who was an ESE specialist. And the way she handled things was more like a Christian than people that claim to be Christians, and I believe she's a believer, but she exemplified the character of love, mercy, forgiveness, and I cannot recall any word coming out of Mrs. T's mouth, and I know she'll know who she is when I say Miss T. She was a perfect example in many respects when it comes to how to deal with the workplace. We are being bombarded bombarded with mental reminders of the mistakes that we made because that's how Satan works, you know, uh, but we have to remind him that we are able to receive forgiveness from God, which is an option he has never had. Come on, if he's going to be messing with you, you and I need to be messing with him and declaring that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I'm going to forget all those things which are behind me. The joy of the Lord, not my happiness, which can be based on conditions, but the perpetual joy of the Lord is my strength. I forgive all those that trespass against me. To trespass is to illegally enter somebody's property or overstep your bounds in another way. There are co-workers that think they are the boss and they try to boss other people around. We have got to learn how to not allow the battle to be with flesh and blood, but know that there's spiritual wickedness in high places 
that are trying to interfere with us being the best God wants us to be. Nosy co-workers prying into your business. Shut them down quickly and do it with a smile. For example, girl, you know you ain't got none of that to do with none of that business. That ain't none of your business. Now you just being messy. <laughs> that's what we say. And that's what we should say. And do it with a smile. Just like Chick-fil-A. It's a pleasure to serve you some of your mind your own business del delicacies. Oh, just to mind your own business. Now, if we, I know me, I felt obligated to give a response to somebody's questions, inquiries, and just busy bodies. Being included in the office gossip, rumors, and backbiting is so commonplace now. We don't feel condemned or bad for engaging in it. But let's hear what the word of God has to say explicitly. It's called private sins like gossip. It needs to be identified and addressed as well. It is fine to identify and confront sin in others if it is done with the proper motives. You see, if you got a coworker that's always gossiping, gossiping, and you go talk about them to other coworkers saying, ain't she always gossiping, gossiping, then you've just engaged in the very same thing that they've done. There is a proper way to do it. And I say it with all discretion. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. If you realize the severity and seriousness of gossip, you wouldn't just be reckless with your mouth and just say anything, even about the one that's engaging or those that listen. You're just as guilty as the one that's bringing it. Handle them with the discretion that you would want to be handled with. And uh, maybe have one of those private one-on-one -on -one little conversations. But many Christians fall prey to gossip. I know that I do. I know that I did. And I know I'm conscious of it. Uh, so let's define it so that we know exactly just having a conversation about co-workers is not gossip. But let's look at the definition of what it says. The word is defined and addressed as Let me see. When we respond. OK, let me apologize. There is a song. Sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. That's important. I need to clean out what's going on in my life and not worry about what's going on in your life or my co-workers lives. If it's not something that we take into God in prayer. Gossip is engaging in conversation that is not positive. That's my, not Webster, my basic generic definition. Engaging in conversation, repeating conversation, listening to conversation that is negative about others. Whether it be children. I've seen teachers gossip about students, fourth grade teachers talking to fifth grade teachers, gossiping about the student that gave them so much trouble and how they don't like the child. Now, it's one thing to address behavior. It's another thing to attack their character because to attack their character is something that we don't want. My behavior may be off, but you don't know me well enough to attack my character and say I'm a bad person just because I don't know when to shut my mouth. I have bad behavior. And let's learn to identify the two. When you bring gossip, or when gossip is brought to you, we need to respond with a message to do prayer and do it immediately. When somebody brings you a piece of conversation that's all juicy, call a thing a thing. Start off by telling them, you know what, girl, and do it with a smile. Now, you know what? I... I I don't think we need to be discussing her divorce. Let's pray for her. And let's ask God to forgive us for engaging in the negativity and discussing all the details of what has transpired. And you go to God in prayer immediately. Father God, I bless this woman 
I pray that her life is fulfilled and satisfied with destiny and that the disappointment in her divorce or whatever's going on, Lord, I just pray that you make the difference. We lead by examples. We teach people how to treat us. If you and I are open garbage cans to receive trash and garbage, people will continue to dump their trash in our mental garbage cans. They need to see that your can is not accessible and that it's not full and that they're not able to allow any more garbage to go inside of your mental banks. I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm telling you it's necessary if we're going to be that light because when people have a real crisis, you see who they go to in the workplace. And if it's not you as a Christian, that says something about what is on display that's not pleasing. We teach forgiveness by asking God to first forgive us for any gossip and mess we've entertained and transmitted others, transmitted to others around us. Be honest. Go back and repent. So, you know, I know we was discussing what we heard about so-and-so. Do you mind if we pray for them? Can we pray at break? When people know you're going to pray, Instead of say stuff that is slanderous or repeat things that are not positive, they're going to they're stop coming to you to drop their trash because they're going to know that trash can is. You've seen the different recycling bins and it says plastic, trash, possibly aluminum. People know where to properly put. Hallelujah. They know where to properly put the right trash. If they know it says plastic, then they realize I can't just put regular trash in there. That's designed for plastic. When people know what we are designed for, say, so, man, you talk about so-and-so, that girl going to pray. <laughs> oh, that guy's going to pray, man. He's going to talk to God. He's going to ask God to forgive us. <laughs> Don't go to her because they know what we are designed to occupy, what's supposed to be inside of us, what we're supposed to be holding. And that's a righteous banner that we pray. We don't say and repeat things that are not positive. Be a part of the talk up club. Talk them up. Don't talk them down. Say what you would say about a person if they were standing right there. That'll change the conversation that comes out of your mouth. If you say, you hear people say, girl, I tell her to her face. I tell him to, I tell my boss off. I would tell him. Well, Let's get an image of them standing there when we choose to express ourselves and our feelings. Remember, God is always listening. Our behavior is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Who do we take up to God in prayer? Or who do we bring down with the devil in despair? People need real help. Do they see us as a bend that will recycle and reuse something to make it beneficial? Or do they just do they just view us as a trash bin? Something that is able to take in the filth, the trash, the garbage, but doesn't serve a purpose. God loves us. He wants us to be the best example of who he is in the earth. Don't be a ready, all-in-one trash bin that just takes in any and everything. Have a designated spiritual sign on you that says, you can only bring truth to me. You can only bring needs to me that relate to you and not hearsay and gossip about others. We've gotten too messy, church. We've gotten too much like the world. Running your damn mouth is going to send many of us straight to hell. Don't play with it. God says life and death is in the power of your tongue. Are you emitting life or are you speaking death? The choice is yours. Choose wisely, my friends. Choose wisely.